Hey Tech Heads, Fina here. Today I have some fun and surprising info for you. It is a ranking of the best selling EVs in Europe, the most up to date data available. So first I want to look at sales from January to October and then at sales in the month of October where some very interesting and dramatic changes happened. So it seems that some car companies will be dethroned from the top of the ranking, maybe because their models are aging about as fast and well as an avocado. So are you curious about what they are? Take a guess and see if you get a hit. All right, let's get into it. Okay, let's start by looking at what share of the European market plug-in cars already have. Are you guessing 5% or maybe 10%? Well, you may be surprised, it's actually already 23%, if you include plug-in hybrids, that is. If we're looking at just pure battery EVs without the unnecessary combustion engine, it's a nice 16% market share. So it's going faster than one would expect, isn't it? I mean, at least for a person who doesn't pay much attention to the EV scene, I would imagine that it could come as a surprise. <laughs> Now, according to EV volumes data shared by researcher Jose Pontes, 24% more plug-in models were registered in Europe last month than a year ago. By comparison, the overall market saw a 14% year-on-year increase. All electric cars remain the main force behind this expansion as the number of BEV registrations increased 36% year over year. I mean, I would say those are some very interesting numbers. Next, let's take a look at new registrations from January to October 2023. It's going to be really interesting. So taking first place by an incredible margin is the Tesla Model Y, well ahead of the actual Tesla Model 3 in second place. Now, when you consider that according to a Reuters analysis, in the third quarter of 2022, Tesla had two times the gross profit per car of Volkswagen, four times that of Toyota and five times that of Ford, it's clear that we are in for a major earthquake in the market. And you haven't even seen October's results yet. So you can clearly see that something is starting to happen there. We'll get to that in a moment. Anyways, in fourth place is Volkswagen with the ID4, followed by the Volvo XC40, where you can see nicely that the hybrid version sold half as many. But I'll reveal that October's results will be quite a shocking turnaround for Volvo. Can you guess in which direction? So in fifth place is the Škoda Enyaq, the ID Force twin with a much better interior and classic steering wheel buttons. And yes, I always nitpick the crazy touch steering wheel in the ID line that Volkswagen still can't get rid of despite promises. And I'll continue to nitpick it until they get rid of it. In sixth place, we have the MG4, which I've been discussing on my channel since its introduction. And the MG4 still has no competition as far as a price to performance ratio, especially the cheapest version with the LFP battery. Seventh place is the Audi Q, Audi, Audi? <laughs> Sorry, Audi Q4 e-tron, a sort of uh, more luxurious version of the car on the MEB platform followed by the ID3, which is the opposite. It's cheap interior, and once again, the touch steering wheel are total deal breakers for me personally. That's followed by the surprising little Fiat 500 electric, which means there just aren't many small EVs to choose from at all. So, hey other brands, what are you doing? All promises, marketing, and nice visuals, and meanwhile, Fiat has sold nearly 55,000 units of the small electric Fiat 500 that they produced. The ranking is rounded off by the Dacia Spring, which I thought really didn't stand a chance in the tough European market due to its strange technology. But as there is simply not much else to buy, despite all the technical and performance limitations, Dacia did manage to sell an incredible almost 50,000 units of the spring. So that is the desperation on the European market in full swing. Now we're getting into the results for the last available month, which is October. So personally, I've really been watching everything kind of change in front of my eyes. Well, everything except for the top spot that is still ruled by the Tesla Model Y. 
but just behind it is the Škoda Enyaq. I want to say it's a similar car, but that would get people in the comments jumping down my throat. So I'll say the Enyaq is just a more classic car than the Tesla. For example, it doesn't lack a boot lid or a display in front of the driver. The Tesla, on the other hand, of course, scores points with the perfect app, the supercharger network, and okay, I could actually go on for another hour about the differences. Their interiors are definitely like from a different world. So we'll see in the future. I think the winner is clear, but let's let ourselves be surprised. Third place is the Audi Q4 e-tron, confirming my guess that the more luxurious interiors just might still pull. In fourth place, we have the Tesla Model 3, but I think we all know why. Buyers were waiting for a facelifted version of the Highland. I do think that's the main reason that the Model 3 fell from second place. And in fifth place, we have the MG4, which still has no competition in terms of price to performance ratio in the European market. At least I can't think of any cars like that. What about you guys? Let me know in the comments, but I definitely can. And it's pretty clear from the sales that others can't either. The sixth place in October is taken by the Dacia Spring, which is a bit sad to me. Of course, I am a fan of affordable EVs, but I think the Spring is an absolutely insane buy for the money. But as you can see, others obviously don't think so. What about you? Are you a fan of the Spring? Let me know in the comments. Now here it comes. So in seventh place is the Volvo XC40, but look how the PHEV versus BEV ratio has changed. Clearly, people have figured out that the hybrid just brings extra problems in real world use. And I absolutely believe that most owners always pray that the internal combustion engine will not have to start in it. Then we have the eighth place with the new BMW i4, which is a confirmation that people still like the classics. And mind you, it's not a sedan, but a much more practical liftback, but you wouldn't be able to tell at first glance, right? Ninth place is the Volkswagen ID4. I do wonder why there has been such a drop. I personally have my suspicions, but I'll keep those to myself. I like to hear from you guys in the comments whether somebody has the same suspicion as me. So please let me know your opinion. Then we have the 10th place, which is the Fiat 500 electric. So we Europeans clearly like our small electric cars. All right, so that's my take on the EV sales stats. I do hope that you found them as interesting and entertaining as I did. I do look forward to seeing you guys in the comments section, so let me know what you think about all this. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already, give a like, and if you enjoy my work and find it useful, a super thanks will always make me very happy. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you next time.